Now, when you fire up your TriCaster for the very first time, the first thing you want to do is register your TriCaster. If you don't register your TriCaster, there will be a watermark on the output of the TriCaster. To remove that watermark, you must register the TriCaster, and you must do this from the very first use of the TriCaster. Now, to register the TriCaster, this can be done from the utility icon from the menu ring. You've got the ability to register the TriCaster here. And when you do this, it's going to ask you for the serial number. Now, you can register the TriCaster with an active internet connection connected to the TriCaster. Just put the serial number in and it will walk you through the process and give you an unlock code. Or you can call New Tech Customer Service and you can register the TriCaster over the phone. You still need the serial number. They'll walk you through the registration process over the phone and then they'll give you the unlock code that you need to enter into the registration area. Once you've entered your unlock code and you've registered your TriCaster, all watermarks will be removed from the output and you're ready to start your live production. And remember, always write down all of the information on the screen once it's complete and keep that information in your records as you might need it sometime in the future. Now you have some other options within the utilities menu area that allow you to manage the TriCaster. You do have the ability to update your TriCaster. This would require an active internet connection and it will go out and look for any updates that New Tech has posted and it will prompt you to download updates as they become available. Your New Tech reseller should also prompt you when updates are available and always check back to the New Tech website from time to time. We'll also make you aware of that as well. Now you also have the ability to defragment the hard drives on the system and you have the ability to restore to factory defaults. You never want to restore your TriCaster to factory defaults unless someone from New Tech or your New Tech reseller has told you to do this. It will reset the system back to where it was when it came out of the factory. Now, one thing to remember is if you do have to restore your system back to factory defaults, it will remove any updates that have been applied to that system. So if you're in a situation where you do a restore, just remember that you're going to want to go back and you're going to want to redo any updates that have been done to the system to get it back to its full capacity. Now let's take a look at the help menu in our menu ring. The help menu is where you have access to all of the user guides available for all of the products for the TriCaster. The live production user guide is available here and it's a PDF which is searchable and printable. We also have an edit user guide, which is the user guide for speed edit, the nonlinear editor that is included with the TriCaster. A user guide for graphics gives you the user guide for live text, the character generator that's both included with the TriCaster and available as an external add-on. And the control surfaces user guide, showing you how to use all of the external control surfaces available for the TriCaster 850 or 450. There are also the license agreement, the about for the TriCaster, and the manuals for the add-ons available in the TriCaster, the animation store creator for the extreme TriCaster versions, allowing you to create full color motion overlay transitions. Again, that's only available for the extreme TriCasters, but we do include the user guide even in the non-extreme versions so that you can take a look at it and see if it's something that you might want to upgrade to. And we also have the user guide for the virtual set editor, which is an add-on for any of the high definition capable TriCasters. This would have to be added to the TriCaster, but again, we do include the manual or the user guide with the TriCaster so you can take a look at it. And we also include a demo version of this product with the TriCaster so you can actually use the product. Again, any of the virtual sets that you create with the demo version will have a watermark on them but you can simply buy the product, install it, remove the watermark, and if you want to take a look at exactly how it works, the user guide is right here, ready for you to take a look at. Now, another area in our menu ring is the new area, and this is where you can set up a brand new production for your TriCaster. We'll click on the new icon here in our menu ring, and this brings us to the area to set up a new production. Now, the first thing that you can do is you can give your production a name. If you don't name your production, it's going to use that day's date. And if you do multiple productions within the same day without naming them, it's going to use that day's date and then sequentially number them for you. So I recommend giving all of your productions some sort of name. It's going to make it much easier to get back to that specific production. And remember, we're creating a session here. 
and everything about the production is going to be remembered by the session. So you could create a session for the morning show, the afternoon show, the evening show. Each one can have different graphics, different transitions, different proc amp settings, different types of inputs, and all of that will be remembered within the session. So again, giving your productions a good identifiable name is a good idea. So we'll go ahead and call our production 850 Demo. Now under that, you have the ability to choose a drive that you want to use as the session drive. Now if you have more than one removable drive plugged into the system, they'll all be available here. And the session drive is the drive that's going to capture all of the information about the session. So this will be the drive that keeps all of that information. You could have other drives in the system. They could have content that you've recorded during the session or that you're using during the session. But again, the drive that you're specifying here is the one that's going to hold all of the information for the specific session that you're setting up. Below that, if you're using a multi-standard TriCaster, you have the ability to choose a standard, either PAL, NTSC-J for Japan, or NTSC. But if you're using a standard TriCaster, you're only going to be able to choose NTSC. Beneath that, you have the ability to choose the session resolution. Now, this is the resolution that will be output from the main video outputs of the TriCaster. This can be high definition in 1080p or I, 1080p at multiple frame rates, 720p also at multiple frame rates, or again, standard definition at 4 by 3 or 16 by 9 aspect ratios. Now the TriCaster also gives you access to any sessions that have been created and used previously. So again, you can set up different sessions for different shows and then have access to them right from the open menu item on our menu ring. So we've got the open menu item here and this shows us all of the projects that we have available or all of the sessions that we have available inside of this TriCaster. I'm going to go ahead and click on the session for our demo, and this brings us to the sessions page. Now, we're not ready to be here yet, so let's use this arrow to get back out to the home page to look at the rest of the variables that are available here on our home page before we get over to the sessions page. Now, you also have the ability to access the add-ons that are available for the TriCaster, and this TriCaster comes with the virtual set editor demo. Again, this is a demonstration version of the Virtual Set Editor program that allows you to create your own virtual sets and your own double box effects. Now, the only thing is the demo version will watermark any set or any effect that you create. To remove this watermark, contact your local reseller or your elite partner and purchase the Virtual Set Editor. You can then install that to your TriCaster and it will overwrite the demo version, giving you a full version and it will remove all of the watermarks. You also have a menu selection for shutdown, and this gives you a few variables. You can restart the TriCaster from here. You can shut the entire TriCaster down and power it off, or you can exit to Windows. The TriCaster gives you the ability to exit to Windows because there are a few things that you might have to do in the Windows environment. If you want to set up a domain, if you want to work with streaming profiles and things like that, you need to be able to get to Windows, but we discourage it. We don't want you to look at the TriCaster as a computer. We always want you to look at the TriCaster as an appliance. Don't load any additional software onto it, and don't try and add anything to the TriCaster that new tech doesn't tell you is appropriate to add. This could compromise the performance of your TriCaster. Now, let's go back to the open area of the menu, and let's open up our project, and it takes us to the sessions page for that specific project. You can see up in the upper left-hand corner, it's telling us the name of the project that we brought in, and it's telling us the resolution that we're working on. There are also a few variables available here in the sessions page from this menu ring. We have our live area allowing us to start our live production environment. You also have the graphics area allowing you to launch live text, which is the included character generator that comes with your TriCaster. You have an edit area allowing you to launch speed edit, the included nonlinear editor that comes with the TriCaster. And you have an area for managing your media before you start your live production, and this is very important. The manage area is where you're going to import all of the content that you're going to use during your live production. If you want to bring in still images, video clips, audio files, anything that you're going to want to use during that live production and play back from the TriCaster needs to be imported before you start your live production. 
To import media, use the Import Media button, and that will launch the Media Importer. Now, this will allow you to import several different types of files. And here, I have an AVI, I have an Apple ProRes file, I have an H.264 high def file, and I have an MPEG file. And let's just select all of these, actually bringing these in from a USB drive. So we connected a USB drive, navigated to the files, and now they come in. Now, as we look at the import media panel, we can see a few differences. So the AVI comes in, and the transcode button is ghosted, and it's off. And that means that the TriCaster knows it can play that file natively. Now the Apple ProRes file, transcode is also ghosted, but it's active because the TriCaster knows that it has to transcode a ProRes file in order for accurate playback inside of the TriCaster. So it's smart enough to do that automatically. Now the H.264 and the MPEG files should play fine inside of the TriCaster. So the transcode is turned off, but it is active. And if you should load these files and find out that you are having difficulty playing them back, you do have the ability to come back and transcode them, import them again, and then you should have no issues whatsoever. Now that you have all of your video connected and you have all of the content imported that you're going to use, you're ready to start a live production. To do this, simply click on the Live button in the menu ring and then click on Start Live Production.